lying there in your bed, shutting your eyes because it's 1 a.m., you have five hours of sleep until work, and out of the blue, a question pops into your head. Am I alone in this vast universe? And after this question pops into your head, you know it's going to be a while. The existence of extraterrestrials seems too unlikely. To many, it seems as likely as the Tooth Fairy or Santa. But major organizations like SETI and a 15-year-old, that's me, take the search for life very seriously. Why, you ask? Good question. I take the search for life seriously because I know that there are more stars in the universe than grains of sand in all the deserts and beaches of our planet. It's tough to digest that our sun is merely a grain of sand in this analogy, and out of the eight planets that revolve around it, only one is known to have life. Imagine the possibilities thousands, millions, perhaps billions of alien civilizations could be thriving in different parts of our universe right now as we speak. I personally use up a lot of time in my day to stop and think about how life began and how we are where we are today. We've gone from a species that thought the moon was a ball of cheese and the earth was flat to a species that can take credit for building the Hubble telescope, creating the International Space Station, and sending rovers to Mars. When we contemplate life, it's important to distinguish between life that can take the form of bacteria and intelligent life that is able to communicate using language, create technology, and even traverse outer space. It's also important to be aware of facts about life here on Earth. For instance, it is a significant fact that 99% of all the species that once existed on Earth have gone extinct. This can tell us a lot about extraterrestrials. There is a striking possibility that alien civilizations were either wiped out or wiped themselves out of existence. Even if they didn't wipe themselves out of existence, it's highly unlikely that they have the technology or intelligence to communicate with us. Consider this. Out of the 100 million species that have existed on Earth, only one, humans, is spacefaring, and that too in the last 60 years. On the other hand, advanced alien life may not even want to communicate with us. The universe is 14.7 billion years old. There may be alien civilizations millions of years ahead of us, and to them, we may seem like tiny ants moving to and fro on the pale blue dot we find so huge and call home. But it's not all about intelligent alien life. We could discover bacterial life too, which in my opinion is much more likely. Remember that for the longest time on Earth, prokaryotic and eukaryotic bacteria were the dominant forms of life. When we search for life, we need to know whether we're looking for creatures that are sentient and can contemplate, or whether we're looking for creatures that are simply alive. Right now, we're looking for both. Personally, I would be extremely excited to see what these aliens look like, particularly the intelligent ones. Movies like Star Wars have stapled this image of aliens with a tetrapod body structure into our heads, having two eyes, two ears, a nose, and a head. But that's close to impossible. They may look like something currently unimaginable. However, I can tell you one thing we and possible aliens will have in common. All life in the universe that is not artificially created will be a product of natural selection. So if we're wondering whether aliens will be friendly or hostile, then the answer is straightforward. If, in order to survive on their planets, the aliens had to be friendly, they will be friendly. And if in order to survive on their planets, the aliens had to be hostile, they will be hostile. But what does that say about us as a species? 
Are we friendly or are we hostile? I think we're both, depending on the circumstances. Now, we like to be very specific with our estimations. We like to know where to look. So we've created parameters, notably the Goldilocks zone, which is the region around a star where orbiting planets similar to Earth can support liquid water. It is neither too hot nor too cold. But we now know that aliens may not necessarily need the same things we do in order to survive. They may not need oxygen or water, and so they don't have to be on a planet within the Goldilocks zone. Knowing myself, I am a believer in numbers, statistics, and mathematically calculated probabilities. So when the Drake equation was introduced, I jumped at the chance to finally look at some numbers. I won't take your time by explaining it, but I will say the reason I don't have much time for it is that it's based on a sample of one. We only have one planet on which there is life. Yes, there are more stars in the universe than grains of sand. Yes, there are even more planets than there are stars. But until we have more data about life on other worlds, the Drake equation is just something to keep us preoccupied. The good news is that we're discovering new exoplanets at a staggering rate. Astronomers and astrophysicists are scanning the night sky with better tools than ever. It's only a matter of time until we discover life on another world. And that would be an absolutely momentous day for all of us.